The brain is an incredibly complex organ in the human body. It contains around 100 billion nerve cells, with each one making contact with other nerve cells to form millions of new connections every second. Now even though every brain is slightly different, there are things they all have in common. The fact there are an array of unsolved mysteries surrounding them. So here we have five that are sure to get you thinking. Phantom limbs. Millions of people a year are born with missing limbs or have to have limbs amputated. And if that's not bad enough, there is a strange experience almost 90% of them will have. It's called phantom limbs, and it's basically the sensation of a limb being there when it's not. It's been confusing experts for years, and even though we are discovering new ways to deal with the problem and are somewhat understanding why it happens, there is no definitive reason behind why the person's brain thinks there is a limb there when there isn't. The condition can vary from itching, tenseness, a nagging feeling, and even painful shocks through the non-existent limb. Unfortunately, many who have phantom limb will suffer with it for the rest of their life, and no painkiller or drug will touch it because there is nothing there to treat. It was first thought that it was caused by some sort of response, where the brain is in denial about the fact there is no limb there, so it will try to give the simulation that it is. But after patients underwent psychotherapy, it was later suggested that this was not the case. Dr. V. S. Ramachandran is a neurologist, and after doing some tests, he believes the part of the brain that receives and interprets sensory signals from different parts of the body is responsible for the feeling. He thinks that phantom limbs arise when the neurons that previously received signals from the amputated limb begin to overlap with the neurons responsible for other parts of the body. During one test, Dr. Ramachandran had a patient who had the feeling that his phantom arm and hand were clenched tightly. So he designed a cardboard box with two armholes and a mirror in between. Looking at the intact arm and its reflection in the mirror creates the illusion that the patient has two fully functional arms. The patient clenched and released his intact fist while looking into the mirror box, and amazingly the phantom pain subsided instantly, leaving Ramachandran to believe that the mirror box creates a major neurological conflict between visual and tactile sensory input. This then leads the brain to become overwhelmed by conflicting signals, ultimately eliminating the phantom limb. But although Dr. Ramachandran's theory is probably the most current, many believe that his theory is incorrect. And despite its success with many patients, it's not always successful and doesn't explain why people who are born limbless have the phantom feeling, because surely their brain shouldn't know any different. This leaves the phantom syndrome yet to be solved and forever reminding us of the complexity of the human brain and its senses. Our brain's ability to remember and store memories. The fact our brains can record and store memories is not only incredibly complex, but also one of its biggest mysteries. Even now we have no idea how our brains do this, nor do we know how this information gets stored in the brain ready to just be thought of at any given time. What we do know though is that there is more than one kind of memory. Declarative memories, this is responsible for remembering things such as names, non-declarative known as muscle memory, short-term and long-term memory. Plus there are lots of other parts that are responsible for performing different memory tasks. Put it simply, it's very complex so you can see why we haven't figured it out yet. Neuroscientists do believe though that our brain storage is a relationship between two or more things. If you're driving a car, how to steer comes from one set of brain cells and how to identify road signals comes from another. Your memory is really made up of a group of systems that each play different roles in creating, storing and recalling your memories. And they all work together to provide cohesive thought. We do know that the electrical firing of a pulse across the gap triggers the release of chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. These neurons are primed to fire together in the same pattern that created the original experience. And the more signals sent between them, the stronger the connection grows, meaning with each new experience, your brain slightly rewires its physical structure, getting more intelligent and able to remember more clearly and quickly. That said, scientists still aren't sure how memories form, why certain memories degrade and fade, why we develop false memories, and why we sometimes cannot access information at all when we want to. So even though research continues to give us increasing insights into what memory is, much of it still remains a mystery. Dreams. Dreaming is incredible. It's basically stories and images that our minds create while we sleep, now, around 95% of the dream we remember when waking up is forgotten by the time we get out of bed. It's crazy because we all just get on with our day never thinking about how incredible dreaming really is and why we do it. But the truth is that we're not entirely sure why or how we dream. And although people may not remember dreaming at all, it's thought that everyone dreams between 3-6 to six times per night. 
What's fascinating is how realistic dreams feel. Like said in the movie Inception, it's only after we have woken up we realise something was actually strange. And it's true. If we were forever to dream, we really wouldn't know any different. Unless of course you are lucid dreaming, but that's a topic for a whole nother video. So why do we dream and how do we dream? Well there are a few theories. Probably the most believed today is psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud's theory that dreams are a representation of unconscious desires, thoughts and motivations. He put forward that we humans are driven by sexual and aggressive instincts that are repressed from conscious awareness, so they find their way into our awareness through dreams. He believes our dreams are made up of two components, one made from actual images, thoughts and content, and the other containing the hidden psychological meaning of the dream. This theory is supported by popular books that we all know, that link dreams to meanings. Another theory is that sleep allows us to process all of the information we have taken in during the day, or that by dreaming we are cleaning up clutter from the mind and refreshing it for the next day. Another interesting theory is that dreaming is a way of making connections between different thoughts, emotions and actions in a safe environment. So there are some theories on why we may dream, but that doesn't explain how we dream. We know that things we see from day to day do influence our dreams, because people who are born blind do not dream with visual images, but have heightened smell, taste, hearing and feel in their dreams. But despite this, why or how we dream is still a mystery, but maybe this next one could hold the answers. DMT and its effects on the brain DMT or N-N-dimethyltryptamine is a very interesting compound. Now, although most of you may not have heard of it before, research suggests that all of us have most likely felt its effects. It's believed to be found in the human body and also in at least 60 species of plants. In a 2011 interview, medical doctor Rick Strassman said that DMT seems to be a necessary component of normal brain function. One of many theories on why DMT may be present in humans is the thought that in times of extreme stress, such as a near-death experience, the body will release a burst of the drug. It's believed to be the human's way of making us feel comfort in a very bad situation. DMT is also thought to have some involvement in our rapid eye movement or REM sleep process, and some researchers say it could well be responsible for our dreams. It's thought during sleep our brains release a small amount of DMT, causing us to have visual and audible hallucinations that we call dreams. Of course, this is only a theory and has not been proven due to the lack of research and complexity of such an experiment. What makes this drug different though is not only the fact it's believed to be produced by humans and some animals, but the incredible similarities people have while self-medicating themselves with it. Rick Strassman conducted clinical studies of DMT inside the human body during the 1990s and hypothesized that it originated inside the brain, coming from a small gland about the size of a grain of rice called the pineal gland, also called the third eye by some. Now, although we know of this gland, we do not fully understand it. Terence McKenna, who was among other things a philosopher, lecturer and author, smoked DMT from 1967 to 1994 and compiled probably the best documentation of its effects. He said that after a few minutes of taking it, you enter what others call the dome. It's filled with strange machines and is throbbing with energy. What's strange is that this place from McKenna's account was inhabited by machine beings that always cheered him on his arrival. He said they would say, hooray, welcome, you're here. He would spend time there, then everything would collapse on itself and he and the beings would be pulled apart. They would wave goodbye and one time he reported them all looking and saying, deja vu, deja vu. McKenna said that unlike other drugs, the DMT trips felt so real, like he was really there with those beings, but he has no clue what they were, saying that maybe they were entities in a parallel continuum, with DMT sending you over to their dimension. One story in particular is that a few friends all tried DMT together. When they came down from their experience, they all reported that they were sat on an operating table with alien beings looking over them, and all of them saw an alien being what they thought was the leader looking at them from the corner of the room. What's crazy is that they all described this being exactly the same. It seems everyone who has taken DMT is confident they are transported into an alien-like world, and there seems so much mystery surrounding it and its effects on the brain. It's believed to be produced in the brain, yet our minds are unable to comprehend it. So whether it's just another drug, or whether it's a way of taking us to another world, no one can be sure. Again, I am in no way condoning the use of DMT. It is, after all, one of the most illegal substances known to man and should not be experimented with in any way. I am only including it because the mysteries surrounding it are very interesting and fit well with the mysteries of the brain and dreaming. Reality 
Prepare to get your mind blown because reality is hard to condense in words. But from scientists to philosophers, everyone has asked the question of what is reality. And the more we think about any sort of answer, the harder it becomes to comprehend. When trying to find out what reality is, scientists have been looking at the relationship between conscious and subconscious reality. Why do we breathe and blink subconsciously, yet other things we have to do consciously? And some studies have shown that maybe we don't even make any of our own decisions, that everything is mapped out for us. A study found that using brain scanners, researchers could predict how a person was going to act seven seconds before the person knew that a decision had been made, suggesting that maybe consciousness is an illusion. There is a thought that if someone was wired up to electrodes that stimulated a part of the brain to mimic the impulses of their everyday life, they would see what was going on, but would that technically be real? Their brain wouldn't know any different, and it would seem like it was happening even if it wasn't. Now with that, there are a few theories on what reality and consciousness is. The first is phenomenalism, which is based on subjective experience, meaning that whatever you observe is real to you. One thought is that things we cannot see simply vanish. Phenomenalists believe that things only exist once they are perceived. So the device you're watching this on and whatever you're sat on only exists as long as you or someone else is aware of its existence. No perception, no existence. It sounds crazy, but no matter what you say, there doesn't seem to be any way to prove whether this is right or wrong. Another popular theory is solipsism, which asserts that nothing exists but the individual's consciousness, that everything around you is nothing but an incredibly intricate dream. People who believe in solipsism say, how can you distinguish the difference between a dream and what we call life? So what is reality? Well, maybe reality is whatever we want it to be. And since our thoughts and intelligence is limited to our brain's capability to think, some say we will never be able to figure out reality because reality is far too complex for us to understand. I guess all we can do is wonder and enjoy life. So that's five mysteries of the brain. I hope you've enjoyed this video and see you next week for a super creepy one, five terrifying cases of poltergeist activity.